your shows, you know, like they want to make sure you feel comfortable and they're, you know, covering all their bases and all this stuff. So the rehearsal process was pretty long. So um, just like being, being immersed in that whole process was like really cool and overwhelming for me as like a, you know, young professional. Um, and plus I was surrounded with so many like amazing adults who are, ha mm -hmm. have been doing this and have crazy amazing credits and uh, people have been on Broadway and like TV and I'm just like, whoa, I'm still in a junior college in dan on a dance team. Like this is really, really cool. And I'm just, I just tried to like um, not, not look like a little kid too. Mm -hmm. I, you know, I wanted to be like respectful of uh, the people who have been there for a long time. So um, I, I remember just like, and even like being thinking about like my whole experience at Aladdin, like I would be in the dressing room and I would just like listen to all the things that like the women around me were talking about. And it, it was, I learned so much in that show and just how to be like a good human being. So um, yeah, really grateful that but um, was that I, was that your first musical experience yes so i was like what am i getting myself into i'm not a singer <laughs> oh my gosh yeah so um it was definitely you know there were definitely some learning curves there and i had to like check myself and like you know stay humble and like be aware of my surroundings because like you know i was i was so new to it and i didn't know how to conduct myself so um yeah and then getting on stage for the first time, I was like, what is this? This is, you know, I've performed and, you know, I've been in front of crowds, but this is Disneyland. This is like a, a beautiful stage with like so many seats. And it was such a cool, like, like such a cool venue. So um, I don't know. I, I, I think about it all the time. I'm so grateful that I had, you know, that chance to be in that show. And, um, and yeah, yeah, that's. Yeah, I love I love thinking about that. That's so. Thanks for asking that. <laughs> yeah, of course. I remember I saw you once on stage, and I I didn't know at the time you were in it. Oh. <laughs> and I I think I Facebooked you or something that night because I was like, I think that's Sherrod. Oh. Yeah. Oh, I mean, I got Isaac's in here. Hi, Isaac. <laughs> oh, sweet. I see some people that I know in here. That's so sweet. <laughs> that's awesome. Anyway, sorry. Side note. No. <laughs> yeah. But yeah, I mean, and then so from there, Aladdin closed. And then what made you want to come back to Disney for Magical Map? Man, all my friends were there. <laughs> and honestly, I, I love, you know, working on a theme park entertainment, I will say, it's corporate entertainment. You know, it's like there are some people don't like it because it's like, oh, my gosh, what is this? Like, we got all these rules and like it's corporate, it's business and da 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 da. But I, for me, I love I love the, stabi the stability that we have. And also we're protected under a union with that, yeah. with certain stage shows. I, um, I loved being, yeah, I love the stability. I love that we were protected to, and they listen to us because they are a corporation and you can't just like, you know, on certain gigs, people be like, okay, like, can you run around and like do this? Like you're an entertainer and you're a dancer. You could just like do it. Right. And it's just like, mm, no, no. <laughs> I, I, I like, you, do you realize like what goes into performing and, and some people don't. So it's just like, we are very much like protected um, through our union and um, through, you know, Disney being a corporation and they like can't, you know, they, you know, they can't be liable for, you know, any, safety stuff and safety it's one of the main keys there it's like mm -hmm. safety begins with me so yep. i i really am like a huge like safety person and if i don't feel safe like i um want to feel heard on like not feeling safe and they at disney they really do like put that really high and it's it's of much importance there so um i'm just yeah so that feeling like i was I, I could have some sort of stability because it's always there. It's always up and running, except for right now. Um, it, like having that and like my friends were there and just like the knowing what, what type of family I had from my first experience with Aladdin, you know, like if you, of course, like Magical Map is a different like cast and it's like a different vibe from Aladdin. Like, 
we still get to see these people and um, do the same show, which some people hate. Some people hate doing a continuous show. It gets redundant, and I totally get that. But it's it's so cool that you get to, for me, you get to get another chance. Say you mess up, and, um, you know, you have so many chances to, like, redeem yourself or, you know, adjust things and get, you know, to a certain degree adjust things. But you just get so many chances to do, to do the show and interpret it in a different way. And also, like, the, the Disney vibe, for me at least, like, I, I love... I love the people that like come in, like the audience, like you're going into Disneyland and you see the audience and they're just like, I'm at Disneyland and you're on stage and like, and I see them and I'm like, yeah, like this is, we're making magic right now. And it's just, I, I love it. I don't know. I just love it so much. So yeah, that's why, that's why I went back. And yeah, there's certain places where I'm just like, oh, yeah, that's stable, but I'm not gonna go back, you know. But Disney, like, I I really enjoyed working for Disney, so yeah. But that's not for everyone, so you yeah. Can do your research and like, you know, if people do have questions about Disney, like, ask people who work at Disney. I've had plenty of people reach out to me and like, hey, like, I'm thinking about doing this. What's it like? And I'll I'll tell you. So yeah, but yeah, <laughs> exactly. Uh, if you guys have questions, drop them down in the comments, and yeah. we'll try to answer them. Um, but I'll keep just talking until you guys have questions. Uh, and I might already be asking some of your questions, so <laughs> don't feel pressured. Uh, so yeah, so Disney, um, then you've done some TV stuff. Uh, how, what was your first, do you remember your first TV gig? Oh, let me think. My first? Katie, awesome. Sorry, Katie, she just applied to Disney. Yay! Doing what? Awesome. Cool. She's she's our drama department president. <gasps> cool. Yes. Oh my gosh. So, oh my gosh, I'm excited for you. But um, I hope we cross paths. That'd be awesome. But and if we do, make sure you introduce yourself because you know I'll I'll remember this and I'll be like, oh my gosh, from Diamond Bar. <laughs> I love my Brahmas. Um, but what was the question? Oh, TV. Um, I. I think, I think my first TV show thing that I did was um, an episode of The Real O'Neills, mm. which isn't running anymore, but it was such a great show. It was, it was on ABC, and I did it, the, the scene that I did was, um, it was like a prom scene, mm -hmm. so I was playing like a high schooler, and which is great, like I, I tend to, I used to be so mad at being, like, people being like, you look so young, you're like, oh my gosh, if I was somewhere they're like, oh my gosh, are you 17? I was like, no, I'm like, not. I'm like, way older. <laughs> and it used to piss me off, but now, like in the past maybe year or two, I've really co like come to embrace it because it really works to my advantage. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so I'll, I'll get booked for things that are like ages 13 to 15, but I, they need like an adult to work in. <laughs> so I've done like I've done a lot of things like that where it's like I'm working with like actual kids. And I'm like, oh man, like, because it's actually okay. So, for anyone who has like this is kind of off tangent, but like for those who are interested in TV and film, the kids that are on set, like it, it kind of costs more money for them, to my understanding, because they have to also hire a teacher so that mm -hmm. they can, you know, have, um, you know, the proper amount of like school work time and stuff like that. So sometimes it works if you, you know, look young, it's it's cheaper for them and less of a hassle for, them for production to hire an adult that just looks young. So um, yeah, I've learned to be really grateful for how young I look. Um, but yeah, working on The Real O'Neills, um, there were a bunch of dancers. I'm so grateful for this one choreographer that I get to work with. His name is Fred and I learned I met him through one of my friends um, who I met through doing Aladdin, actually. Mm. She referred me to him because she's like his assistant and best friend. And I was like, sure, cool, I'll do it. And um, But he, yeah, he's who I've worked on a lot of like TV stuff with.
tiring. Like as simple as it may look on TV, it is, it's really draining sometimes. You have to, um, you have to do a bunch of takes sometimes just so they can get different. It's not even your fault. It's because they need different camera angles. They need all this stuff to make one, you know, flawless thing. So um, it is very draining. So I remember like that job, um, my feet were killing me. Like I think every, every girl had like blisters on their feet because we were in like heels because we we're at prom. And I remember like we couldn't really sit anywhere <laughs> we were um and there i've been in like also some weird situations where i couldn't sit comfortably i remember uh, this is off tangent too because it's um, a music video but i did like a couple steve aoki music videos and we were in like white body paint and we couldn't destroy all that hard work that like the special effects artists did so we had to like sit so uncomfortably and it was so awful but like <laughs> and, and we had to take multiple takes in in that uncomfortable like body paint and we're sweating under our like pleather like outfits so it's just like oh my gosh like I, this is really cool but also really tiring because we have to get you know all these takes but it's you just gotta you gotta keep moving but that's the reality of being on like TV and film, it's like, may look really cool, may, may pay very well, but it, it's hard work. <laughs> You're so, putting in the work for that money. Yeah, totally. So, um, yeah, that's, that was my first, like, TV thing. Oh, and, like, <laughs> I remember I got hired, or I got casted to do, like, a, a commercial. Mind you, I, I don't have very much, I should, I should get into classes, um, very much, like, commercial like acting experience so I was like I honestly got this part because of the way that I look and sometimes it's just like that like you you fit the aesthetic that they need and that's just the nature of the business so um I I got this spot on a commercial and um yeah that that well that one was like a non-union thing and um it, it was that was an odd experience that wasn't as nice as like the, the union thing that I did I will say that so um some people I also get this question that um you know people have you know worries about is like oh I need to join the union um and what I will say this is a little bit maybe a little bit different for theater but if there are any dancers like listening to this um, you know, join the union when you have to join the union. It's mm -hmm. great to be protected and all that stuff, but, you know, there still are a bunch of non-union stuff that you can still do. And and I think that kind of goes for musical theater, too. There's yeah. still a lot of non-union stuff before you, you join equity. And you need to do a bunch of, like, non-union stuff, correct, before. Yeah, and especially in, in Southern California. I mean, if you're living in Southern California, there's not many union jobs. Mm -hmm, true. I mean, yeah. if you if you want to work consistently in Southern California, most people have better luck non-union. But if you're moving to New York yeah. or other places, mm -hmm. you want to be union to even get seen. To totally, yeah. And I feel like... Yeah, it's a little bit different for dancers, but that's what I've heard for um, musical theater too. But, but yeah, I think that's, yeah. Did I miss anything? I don't know. <laughs> no. Uh, let's see, here's a question and just you could tailor it however, uh, but it says, what is your dream role? Do you have a dream role or a dream show, dream TV show to be on? Or do you mm -hmm. wanna be in a work that someone creates for you? Or I don't know, do you have some kind of, dream goal that's a good question mm, I you know honestly I don't have like a specific specific role to be quite honest I don't have a specific role that I um am like shooting for um is there any like dream choreographer you would love to work with I would love to work um with Kenny Ortega oh yeah yeah any any chance that I got to go to like an audition of his, it has been the most wonderful like audition. He it, he's so he's just so good. If you guys ever get a chance to like go to an audition for him, like go to go to that. He just like he, at, holds the audition wonderfully. 
like he just makes you feel so seen and appreciated and the way that the he makes sure that the audition runs like you know the dance like there's no question about it and you can just like perform i actually the last kenny ortega audition that i went to i was like yeah like that's the, like i stopped dancing and then we were like standing in line and i was like i think i got this this is the <laughs> best i have ever danced in my life but i think it's just because i was so like inspired in the room that i was like yeah this is good but i got cut like <laughs> even, though, <laughs> even though i felt like that was the best i have ever danced at any audition it could have been <laughs> though it could have been yeah but i just didn't fit the role yeah but, um <laughs> i think it was just so funny i think about that and i left and i was like what did i am i tripping right now like what did i do wrong i felt so good but i wasn't even mad i was just like wow that just like felt so good so yeah if i if i could i would love to work for, with kenny ortega so um yeah that's that's one person who comes to mind like automatically. Um, no, there's probably more, but I can't think about it right now, or I can't think of it. So. <laughs> uh, what are some things? Because obviously being in quarantine, what are some things now that you're doing either for your dance or for yourself mentally, um, just to get you ready for whenever you can jump back into dancing as a career again? That's Any a good question. So yeah, so what I've been talking to my, like something that I've like chit chatted um, with my girlfriends about, like who are also some of my closest girlfriends, we are all performers. And um, we've just talked about how there's are different types of people. And you know, some people they need this time to just like rest and recuperate. Mm -hmm. And some people need, you know, they're taking advantage of this time and like, signing up for workshop there's so many virtual workshops so much stuff yeah so many resources resources which i think is so wonderful and you know you should take advantage of it but also like for me personally um i'm the type of person who needs to rest and recuperate because mm -hmm. like me in the industry like i'm like i used to go crazy if i wasn't doing anything if i had no new projects or new new gigs coming up and that's just the way that I hustled in the industry, which, you know, a lot of people are like that because gigs and shows are temporary and they do close. Yeah. So you have to keep it moving. You got to keep your momentum going. Um, so right now, because I don't have, you know, there is no obligation. I'm really like taking advantage of like resting my body. <laughs> um, but also, you know, I, I still am working out and to the best of my ability, I kind of fell off for a little bit. But my, my friend teaches like a, um, my friend teaches a Pilates class on Zoom that I've been like, you know, trying to take advantage of. And uh, yeah, and I think I, I think taking the time right now, because as artists, like, especially as a working professional, it gets really clouded and it gets mm -hmm. like so busy and chaotic in the industry, taking the time right now to just like center myself and ground myself. And um, yeah, just like really, and it's given me like a huge appreciation for performing. Cause like, mm -hmm. you know, back before all this, everything was happening, like I, I was performing every single like every single week. No, no doubt about it. There was never like a week unless I was like on a vacation or something like that, um, that I wasn't performing. And like this just gives me the time to really miss it and appreciate it even more than I did um, before. So just like getting back to those roots of like why I'm doing this and, um, you know, who I am as an artist and as a, a human being, because like the way that I am as an artist is because of the way that I am as a human being. And I think people forget about that sometimes. So yeah, for me, the way I'm, I'm taking care of myself is um, I'm just like grounding myself and trying to stay still and get in tune with myself as like spiritual and like cheesy as that sounds. But, no, I mean, yeah. so as, as artists, you, there, you have to recharge sometimes. I mean, it's mm -hmm. so draining, especially doing it as a job. Sometimes it feels like a job because you're doing it so much yeah. and you love it, but it's still a job. And sometimes yes. you need to take that time to really just recharge. And like you said, remember why you love doing this mm -hmm. and miss it. And then it'll help motivate you even more when you can jump back in. 
Yeah, totally. I think that's what some people on the outside sometimes forget. It's like, yeah, this is like our livelihood and this is our job. So there, you know, it's not all, it's not all rainbows and butterfly and butterflies and, you know, n nice makeup. I actually had a girl like reach out to me one time. She's like, and I asked her why she wanted to go into uh, like entertainment. She's like, I just like love seeing the videos and, you know, the makeup and stuff like that. I was like, girl, you're in for a harsh reality because this is, this is a lot of hard work. It's not, it's, it's not stage makeup all the time. Sometimes it's like you're crying because like you're so like emotionally like drained, you know, there's a lot of emotion that goes into what we do. And um, yeah, I think it's, we need to remind ourselves to like take care of our mental beings um, because this is a, it's a, a really rewarding but a really draining um, industry. So. Yeah. And I mean, something we've talked about over and over with everyone is, I mean, the amount of no's you're going to get too. Yeah. Totally. That's, that's something that people, they may think they're prepared for, but they're not. Yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah. It's so, it's so crazy. Like for me, for us, it's just like a, it's our reality. It's like, oh yeah, we yep. know that we're going to hear no's, but like sometimes going into it, people aren't told that. So I think that's something really important to reiterate for people who are are going into this it's like okay it's so good but like you're gonna hear no so take care of yourself and like you know do what do what you can and just keep at it because it, it really is rewarding but you've got to keep at it you have to be a certain type of person to like really thrive and survive in the industry so um, when well, i think yeah. like you said there's the thing is too there's always a spot for you but it might not be that spot that you thought it was mm -hmm. and oh. you have to go to every audition to find that spot mm -hmm. yeah it takes like it takes experience and it takes like you know trial and error to figure out what you like and like where where you can like thrive and you know what you want to research even more and like go into more so you know if you see an opportunity that interests you like take it like even if it's, you know, not the the end goal for you, maybe if you're interested one bit about it, uh, like go into it and like learn what you can from it. Because um, yeah, the thing, the, I've learned so many things through jobs that not only that I love, but that I hate too. Mm -hmm. So um, I think it's important to like, you know, just really, really go for it. Why not? You know? <laughs> You have to. I, I swear you have to. Yeah. Uh, here's a question. Do you have any gigs that you turn down and later regret? Oh, yes. Mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah. Well, okay. So there's been so many. I can just think of it just because it was recently. Um, just saying, being like, oh, no, like I'm on hold for this. Um, so I'm going to say no. Uh, but then I ended up getting like, released from the from the other job that I had um so I'm like oh darn like I could have done that job and that would have been so fun uh yeah that th that's the only scenario that I can think of where I'm like dang it I should have just like said yes to that because who knew like I didn't know if this was like actually gonna go through it would have been really cool like if I did do it but I, I didn't end up doing it um that's the hard thing yeah being a performer it's like having to make those choices too yeah, balancing, like, like outweighing certain situations. Like, I think that's like a hard thing that I've learned too, especially because, you know, there, there are jobs out there and sometimes they come flooding in all at the same time and you're like, oh my gosh, what, what's the right one? So, um, yeah, I think, but that, I think that's the only, um, oh, also, but saying, saying y yes too late has also mm. been something that I regretted. Just be like be thinking about it too much. And then, um, yeah, saying yes too late. I'm like, oh darn, like I should have just said yes right away. Like, what was I thinking? But um, yeah, so that's, that's the only regret I have for gigs I haven't taken. <laughs> yeah, any final questions, drop them down. Um, but I guess Sharon, any, any final words of encouragement or thoughts for anyone who wants to pursue performing arts in any way? Um, I would say maybe probably the most important thing that I have learned throughout 
my professional like performing career is to really enjoy it. And I think that has worked out in so many different ways is to truly be grateful for the opportunity that you have to be this vessel, you know, um, you get to be a vessel of like entertainment and laughter and light. And if you take the time to really enjoy every single aspect of this journey, this career path, this like anything that you encounter within this, that is going to read for someone who is behind the table that's going to read to people who are working with you that is going to read on your resume honestly yeah. <laughs> i think it's going to it really does um pay off to be grateful for what you are doing and being grateful for the opportunity and the ability and um chance like to do to do this and this art form and your art your craft your talent like be so grateful for it because it really does make the journey of this crazy industry so worth it so um yeah practice gratitude and you time. i mean you can learn something from every experience whether good or bad totally always I, learn 100 percent <laughs> always oh, oh there's always something to take out of any situation everything happens for a reason no matter how many it's a cliche for a reason you know people say it a lot because it's true like everything happens for a reason so so yeah <laughs> well thank you sharon for joining us Yay, um it's so me. good to see you and and hear about you and congratulations on everything Yay, and you um, too. thank I you for like being creative during this whole time <laughs> i had it so hard yeah. It is, but you know what? The same thing, it pays off. I mean, yeah. finding what works and everything, again, is trial and error. I mean, learning to teach online is very different than teaching yeah. in person. And so just taking all the experiences, good or bad, trying to figure out what works and, and try mm -hmm. to keep everyone connected because we do have a lot of these seniors who want to go on performing. Mm -hmm. uh, so it's good to hear from people like you give them some hope and also some advice for what they can do moving forward. Yay! Yeah, but totally. Thank you, Sharon. Have yeah, a wonderful no day. Thanks. And hopefully you can come visit us at Diamond Bar sometime oh soon. Up to, I would love to see a production. Yes, come visit us. But Yay. thank you. Thank you. Bye. Have a good one. Yay. Bye, guys. Bye, everyone.